Today, I want to talk about something uncomfortable. Or at least something that most people are uncomfortable with. You see, I make this distinction because what we are going to talk about today should really and truly be anything but uncomfortable. It should be as easy to talk about as the common cold or the shape of your cheekbones. Today, I want to talk about vaginas <laughs> and vulvas and sex. <laughs> and as we have this conversation, I want you to ask yourself, what is it about these words that make us so uncomfortable? The truth is, we've all been taught since we were young that our parts down there are to be kept private. We see half-naked men and women day in and day out. Yes, sex sells. But the minute we talk about female reproductive parts in a legitimate medical context, it is deemed inappropriate. Considered too frank, not something we should talk about in public. Case in point, in 2011, Kotex brand tampons had an ad, a TV commercial, banned across the United States for using the word vagina. You guys know vagina, right? The place the tampons go? <laughs> Fast forward, 2015. Billboards in LA and New York City for a postpartum product are forced to be taken down for using the same word. Media representatives, re representatives actually asked if the company would replace the word vagina instead with body or bottom parts. <laughs> right? Fast forward to today, 2019, surely we have come a long way. I mean, these are simply anatomical terms we're talking about. In reality, ads relating to women's health products or services are routinely declined and banned on Facebook. Yet those sexy images, they're approved no problem. You guys, this is not okay. It is not okay that we are afraid, embarrassed, or ashamed to talk about this part of our body a part of our body that roughly half of the population has. How can talking about this be considered too frank? And why should you care? The truth is, our lack of talking about this part of our body, our lack of talking about our pelvic and our sexual health, has led to some very serious consequences for women and men alike. <coughs> And this is not a statement that I say lightly. This is a legitimate truth that I see each and every day. Because it means that women are wondering whether or not they are normal because they don't understand this part of their body. It means that women are living in or dealing with pain. Women are embarrassed or afraid that someone may see that they are struggling with incontinence. They are embarrassed to talk to their partners, their friends, or even their healthcare providers. And not only that, it means men are often completely unaware that any issues can even exist. You guys, this just isn't right. My name's Cassie, and I'm a pelvic health physiotherapist, which means that I get to work with women each and every day and help them optimize their health. I specialize in treating the muscles and joints in and around the pelvis and pelvic floor, as well as the whole body. And I work primarily with women who have what's called a pelvic floor dysfunction, or who may experience symptoms like urinary incontinence, back pain, hip pain, or pain with sex, among many other things. And my mission as a physiotherapist, my mission in life, is that we open up this dialogue and we start talking about this stuff. We change the way we all feel about pelvic and sexual health. Change the way we talk about it, but most importantly, change the way we experience it. It is my mission to create, create the opportunity for each and every one of you to take ownership of your health and to live your best life. 
So that's exactly why I'm here today. I'm here to challenge you, challenge you to make the uncomfortable comfortable. Challenge you to take action, to learn, to talk about this stuff. And I'm going to tell you exactly why it all matters. Because what I want you to know is this. Though pelvic floor dysfunctions are not normal, they are incredibly common. In fact, chances are you, or someone you know, is dealing with symptoms. They can affect anyone, young or old, male or female, those who are sexually active, or those who abstain. Some numbers for you. Depending on the research you're looking at, research shows that between one and four, or one in two women, experience urinary incontinence. One in 10 have pain with sex, and even more experience symptoms like painful periods, painful orgasms, back pain, among many other things. You guys, it does not have to be this way. And yes, today I'm talking mostly about women's health, but guys of the audience, I'm also talking to you. You are not immune. You too have a pelvic floor. But not only that, you all have mothers and sisters, and some of you have female partners. Does your wife or partner experience these symptoms? Do you even know? I don't ask you this to make judgments, because as I said, many of us are unaware that this stuff even exists. But rather, I ask you this to challenge you to go home and have that uncomfortable conversation, to ask those questions. If you guys aren't compelled to do so by the end of this talk, then come find me at lunch and we'll chat it out. Because <laughs> I guarantee I can change your mind. Because having these conversations will strengthen your relationships. It will strengthen them emotionally. And in the case of romantic partnerships, physically. Guys, it can mean a better sex life. Now, to start opening up this dialogue, to start talking about this stuff, we have to use the words vagina and sex and vulva, and we need to talk about the challenges we face going to the washroom or having sex. And we need to understand what the heck the pelvic floor is and what it does. The pelvic floor is a group of muscles, okay? And those muscles sit pretty much like a hammock, and they sit low in your pelvis, How, why we call it the floor. The image, is, image you're looking at here is looking up. And these muscles play four major roles, okay? And what I want you to primarily remember is that they're muscles. Their roles are, number one, to keep things in our body. For example, I think everyone can agree we would want our organs to stay in our body at all times, right? But then also urine, feces, and flatulence when we choose. Number two, they allow things in our body, such as inserting a tampon or during penetrative sex. They allow things out of our body, such as urine, feces, flatulence, when we choose, or if you're having a baby. And then number four, they play a major role in sexual functioning. And as I said, these are muscles. And like any other muscle of our body, they're meant to contract and relax throughout the day as they're needed. Think about your diaphragm. Your diaphragm will contract and relax depending on whether you are taking a breath in or out. It goes through this cycle constantly throughout the day. Well, all, our pelvic floor goes through the same cycle, and it's when either the contraction or the relaxation, or maybe both, aren't happening properly that we start to have issues. To make this a little easier to understand, I want you guys to take your hand for a second. Now, imagine your hand was a little bit weakened and it wasn't working properly. How would you hang on to something? How would it support what you were holding? Now take that hand and make a fist. And imagine holding this unrelaxed fist over a long period of time. Maybe your hand would get sore. 
Or maybe the muscles of your forearm or your shoulder might get a little tight. Or maybe when you're finally able to open up your hand, it might be hard to do or cause a little bit of pain. These are all things that can happen with our pelvic floor. And as I mentioned, it's when those muscles can't contract or relax that we start to see issues. We start to see dysfunction. Dysfunction that can manifest as the inability to hold back urine when you laugh, cough, or sneeze, or as pain with penetrative sex. Dysfunction that can mean discomfort and pain simply from wearing a tighter pair of pants or as a strained relationship with your partner. Dysfunction that can be experienced as a heaviness or a pressure in your vagina because the organs are actually starting to descend because there's a lack of support underneath. And believe it or not, these are only some of many, many ways that women can experience dysfunction. And as you can imagine, these can go from being a minor annoyance to being absolutely, entirely devastating and life-altering. These experiences can mean a lack of freedom. A lack of freedom to work, to travel, to do the simple things in life, like going for a run, watching your son or daughter at his soccer game, or dance recital, or being intimate with the one you love. I want to share with you a few quotes. My husband and I didn't have sex for five years. I know he thought I no longer wanted to, or that I didn't love him the same way. But the truth is, sex caused me pain and anxiety. I thought and was told that this was just going to be my life now, that I wouldn't be able to run anymore because it would cause so much leaking. Because sex hurts since I've had my baby, I've refrained, and I no longer have the desire to have sex with my partner. It's been a year. I didn't know there was help. I didn't know you existed. I wish I knew sooner. Everybody just told me to use more lube, have a glass of wine, and I would be okay. You guys, it does not have to be this way. There is actually so much we can do. You do not have to just live with it. And that's where I come in. You see, I actually have this pretty incredible job because I get to work with women and their partners each and every single day to help them talk openly about their body and experiences, treat any dysfunction, and get them feeling their absolute best. When clients come to me, we figure out the reason, the cause for their symptoms. And then I use a variety of hands-on techniques and treatment methods, along with exercises, in order to get those muscles moving, contracting, relaxing, as and when they should. I coach behavior change, and I help guide my clients on how to continue to live an active life doing all of the things they love without fear of symptoms. And yes, of course, this includes being sexually active. My mantra in life is that I will, either, I will either find a way or make one. It's a quote that actually means so much to me. I tattooed it on my arm right here. Out viam, invenium, out faciam. And what this means is that I will either find or make a way to ensure that every single client I see, and on a broader scale, every single person I talk to, can lead their best life without fear of their reproductive parts. And you guys want to know what continues to drive me, to push me, to better my skills, and to talk to groups of people just like you? It's the moments. The moments, like just last week, when a client came to me and she said that she was able to have sex with her partner for the first time in two years, and it did not hurt. 
When moms come to me and say they were able to go for their first run since having a baby without leaking. When surgeries are canceled because they are no longer needed. And when women who are originally terrified and ashamed to come see me, they leave shouting to the world how incredible pelvic floor physiotherapy is. You guys, there's so much we can do to better our health. We need to stop focusing on reactive healthcare and start focusing on prevention. Discussion, awareness, and support is so important when it comes to our pelvic and sexual health, but also to our health in general. The truth is, if we open up the dialogue right now, we can create the opportunity for change. We can change the conversations and the feelings we all have to these words. And we can help and inspire others to do the same. The outcome of it all? Well, in 10, 20, 50 years from now, the words vagina and sex and pelvic floor, they're not going to be uncomfortable anymore. They're going to roll off the tongue with ease because we're all going to have a better understanding of our body. The future means we will all be taught young about our pelvic and sexual health. It means that women will routinely seek care from physiotherapists before, during, and then again after pregnancy. It means that those who are currently dealing with symptoms will have sought help and they will be living a happier, healthier life. Out viam, invenium, out facium. We will find a way, you guys, or we'll make one. This is our future. And it starts right now with each and every single one of you, the women and the men of the audience. It starts with you guys talking to each other and then going home and talking to the ones you love, learning, asking questions of people like me who can help. The future means no more stigma associated with our reproductive parts. I don't know about you guys, but I most certainly cannot wait to look back on this very day, years from now, and applaud just how very far we've come. Thank you.